forget that, brothers and sisters, because that's one thing the enemy wants you to forget, or he does not want you to remember, or he does not want you to learn, because let's face it, a lot of times we grew up, right, believing in the wrong God, right? The God that our parents taught us, our God that we learned from a false uh, religion or a false ministry, okay? We need to believe and we need to know the God of the Bible. Amen? Not the God of my grandma, not the God of my mom, my dad. I need to know the God of the Bible. Amen? That is where you will find your strength. That is where you will find true hope in the Lord. You know, it's awesome what Pastor said just a minute ago, that we are the ones that we know the scriptures. We have no excuse, right? Through the scriptures is how you're going to learn who God is. Through the scriptures, through the doctrine, which means teaching, is how we learn who God is all, who God is all about. Who's God? Who's Jesus? Right? Who are they? Who is he? Because he's one. Right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit are one. So when the enemy comes to attack you and tells you that your God is a weak God, you tell him, Satan, you are a liar, get behind me. Because my, the, my God is more powerful than anything or anyone on earth or anywhere. There is nobody greater than my Lord Yahweh. Amen? Remember that, brothers and sisters. Because the time's getting short, and guess what? His attacks are going to increase. Right? And guess who's the target? We're the target, brothers and sisters. And why do you think the enemy has been attacking you? Especially right now, you're in the fast. Why do you think he's been attacking you more? You see this. It's not by coincidence. Okay? Those that are not in Christ are not a threat to the kingdom of Satan. Only those that are of the kingdom of God are a threat to the kingdom of Satan. Okay? Those that have given their hearts to Christ. Those that have said, Lord, here I am. Father God, come what may, here I am, Lord. I might not be know-it-all. I might not be the strongest in the church. I might not be the most talented or the most beautiful one in the church, but here I am. Because it's not about me. It's about who's in me. And that's the awesome part about being a Christian. I don't have to be good at something. I just have to be good at one thing, and that's loving Jesus. Loving Jesus with all my heart, all my soul, and all my might. That's it. If you can do that, you're golden, brothers and sisters. God will use you like you have never imagined yourself to be used. I promise you that. That is a promise of the Bible. That if you surrender your heart and you surrender your will, God is faithful. Amen? God is faithful to you as an individual. So that's what we're going to talk about today, brothers and sisters. Once again, welcome. Thank you for coming. I know you're not here for man, but you are here for the Lord. Amen? You want to hear from God. So that's what I want you to do as you're sitting there. I want you to believe, first of all, and I want you to, to, to pray, right, that God will give you your, the word for today, the manna for right now. Not yesterday's manna, not last year's manna, but today's fresh bread. Okay? I want you to pray for that right there as you're sitting. Because that's how the Lord will speak to you through his servant. Amen? So, remember, God is a faithful God, brothers. That is one thing that we've been teaching about, and that is one thing that I want you, or he wants you to remember. Now, we're going to start with Deuteronomy 32.4. It's just a little review from last uh, month. Deuteronomy 32.4, the Word of God declares that, you know what? God is the rock. His work is perfect. Notice that. His work. What work? Creation. Us. The church. The ecclesia. The Word of God. All those are His work. Everything is perfect in Christ. Amen? Without Christ, it is not perfect. Nothing broken. Only in Christ. His work is perfect. For all his ways are just. In other words, he is a fair God. Aren't you tired of this world, unfair world, right? Where they promote those that are that they know and not those that deserve it, right? And, I mean, and that's everywhere. You know, I guarantee you that's your job, it's my job. People are not fair, right? Teachers, uh, schools are not fair, right? Some policemen are not fair. You know why? Because they're human. And as long as there's that sinful nature, People are not going to be fair. Okay? Remember, our fight is not against flesh and blood, right? It's not against humans. Our our, our, our fight, right, is against principalities. 
demonic uh, spirits that influence or possess even people without Christ. Right? Remember that. So our struggle, again, is not against flesh and blood, right? It's not your boss. It's not the, 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 that person uh, that, that cut you off. It's not him. It's, it's those that are influencing you. So our fight is not a physical fight, brothers and sisters. Our fight is a spiritual fight. And the church has forgotten how to fight. Or they have never learned how to fight. All right? For those of you that watch MMA, and, 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 and you see those uh, two fighters get in the ring, or get in the cage, right? What happens to the one that, that has not trained? What happens to the one that, you know what? He, yeah, he might be li had lifted weights all his life, but gets in there and doesn't know how to fight. What's going to happen to him? Is he going to get his, his nose knocked off or something, right? Well, guess what? As Christians, if we never trained, how do we train? By reading the Bible, by going after God, because you can read that all day long and become a walking dictionary. But it doesn't, it's not going to serve you any good without the anointing. How do you receive the anointing? By walking and trusting in Christ. Right? And by experiencing God. That's how the anointing comes. You experience God. When you are going through that trial, brothers and sisters, that's when the anointing comes. That's when the anointing is birthed. It is not birthed in an air conditioned, uh, sitting down and drawing music. That's not the way the anointing comes. The anointing comes when you are in your deathbed and you, there's nobody there but Christ. Right? When you are, uh, uh, you are holding the hand of your child and there's no way out, right? That is when the anointing comes. That is when God presses that olive. How do you get oil from an olive? You squeeze it. Guess what? How does God get anointing in us or through us? He squeezes us, brothers and sisters. <laughs> it hurts. The anointing hurts. You know, I used to see young uh, Christians or, or uh, people that wanted to be ministers, and they will go up to the older minister and say, how, how can I get your anointing? Oh, you don't want to find out. You don't want to find out how I got this anointing. Right? Brothers and sisters, that's, you don't have to be a minister to experience that. As Christians, we live our days, our, our lives daily. We, we should be experiencing Christ daily. Not just once a year or once in a lifetime. God wants to talk to you each and every day, brothers and sisters. Right? Not just not just behind through, through behind through the person behind the pulpit, but he wants to talk to you personally. He wants you to hear him. Why? The Bible says that the, my sheep, right? He didn't say my pastors. What did he say? My sheep know my voice, says Christ. Notice it. It is the sheep that know or should know his voice. Right? And that's how we walk daily by listening and by surrendering. By humbling ourselves. So God is faithful, brothers. He will speak to you. He will work in your life. But we have to have a surrendered heart, our surrendered will. You know that God is fair, a God of faithfulness, without injustice, righteous and upright as He. Notice that. That is a God we serve. He will never leave you. If He said He will never leave you nor forsake you, that means that He is never going to leave you nor forsake you. The problem is that we're the ones that leave him and forsake him. And then we wonder, where are you, God? We're the ones that leave him. Amen? So, God is our rock. He is, he is solid. You know what? He does not waver. Aren't you glad that our Lord, our Father, does not waver? Right? He's not going to tell you one thing today and then another thing tomorrow. That's us. You know? We do that to one another. Oh, yes, brother, I'll be there. Oh, you can count on me. Okay, where's brother so-and-so? I thought he was going to be here. Oh, sorry, brothers, kid. They had a they had a tick, an extra ticket to go see the Cowboys. So, I mean, I think it's the Cowboys. I'm just putting that out there, right? They could be any football game. Put you know, put, put a name on there. Or any sport, right? Don't go there, brother David. <laughs> you know, it could be anything, right? And we 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 just you know what? We don't keep our word. We do not keep our word. And every one of us, you know, I include myself on top of the list, brothers. Why? Because we, first of all, again, we're human. We have a sinful nature. Now, when we accept Christ, right, there is that inner battle. Christ will give you a new heart, a new heart that will overcome that sinful nature. You see this? That's how we walk with Christ. That's how we're able to overcome. 
by the blood of Christ, by having a new heart. So, 2 Corinthians one twenty says that all promises of God are yes, notice this, in Christ. And so through him, our amen is spoken to the glory of God. Remember we talked about this last month. We, we, we mentioned that amen means let it, be, let it be so, right? Let it be fulfilled. Let it be, let it be your, your way, right? So God is saying, listen, hey, all my promises are going to become true. All my promises are yes in the amen. So why would the Bible put a title of the amen in Christ or on Christ? Who's the one that came and fulfilled scripture? Who's the one that kept all the commandments? Who's the one that died on the cross for our sins, just like the book of Isaiah wrote it, it, it was going to happen? Christ, right? Yeshua, Jesus. Because Christ is, is a title. That's not his last name. Right? The anointing. The Messiah. Jesus. Jesus is Nazareth. He's the one that came, became man. God Almighty became man and dwelt among us. Tabernacle, the Bible says. Tabernacle uh, among us. Emmanuel, God with us. He's the only human, right, that ever kept the word of God perfect. He's the only person that ever fulfilled the law. Not only did he fulfill it, but it was fulfilled in him. Isn't that beautiful? Right? Not only did he fulfill it, not only did he come to be, to come declare the message of the gospel, but he, he is the gospel. Amen? So, remember that. All the promises, every single word that was pre-written before Christ dwelt among us, every word that was written while Christ was here, and every word that has been written since he ascended are in Christ. Everything is about Christ. Everything is for Christ. Everything was because of Christ. You see this. Everything points to Christ. From Genesis to Revelation. You will find no one else but in Christ. So, God has shown us through his word. Right? Remember what the word. And, his, and has demonstrated through his works that he is faithful. As he? He's fulfilled every promise that he promised in Christ. Everything that he ever foretold about Christ, every, every word that the prophets foretold about Christ, every single prophecy, Jesus fulfilled. There is nothing that was left undone. That's, that is why Jesus said it is finished. Everything that the Father sent me to do, I have done it. Okay? And I did it in love, says the Lord. I did it because I love you. Not because anybody forced me. Not because I joined a cult. Not because, you know what, I want to look good in front of my mom. No, I did it because I love you. See that? Christ loves you. Christ loved you even when we were sin, full of sin and hate and anger and unforgiveness and bitterness and all this resentment, resentment, depression and all this. Words that just sin, full of sin. He loved us even then. He pulled us out of the mud, right? And he gave us his name. We are his people. I don't care how you look. I don't care what you've done in the past, right? Some of us can write 10 books about what we, bad stuff we've done in the past. Or maybe 10,000 books, right? Or am I the only one? <laughs> Not that I'm proud of that. You know, you know how the word of God says there's not enough, you know, not in the, you know, basically I'm paraphrasing, but Jesus said, even if you had a library, you cannot, you know, you cannot contain all the books, all the scriptures that have been written about me, says the Lord. Well, that was kind of us, right? But the other way, <laughs> aren't you glad that Christ came and forgave our sins and gave us a new heart? See this, you know, some people try to live. And, and they don't, they don't, it's not their intention to live a religious life, right? Because I see it in some of my family members. It's not their intention. They try to live for Christ, they try to live for God. 
right? Not, not so much Christ, but they say, Mi Diosito, right? My God. And they try to live for him without Christ, without the Holy Spirit in them. They can't, brothers. It's impossible to live a holy and righteous life for God without Christ, without the Holy Spirit in us. It is impossible. Without Christ, we will sin every second of our lives. We're already standing in sin without Christ. See, because the world is already con uh, condemned. They're already judged. If you die tonight without Christ, you go directly to hell. Why? Because you are already judged. Sin is already in you. It, have to, it has already happened. That's what people don't realize. You know, I know because I used to think like that, that, well, if I do enough good, it's going to outweigh my bad. That's not the way it works. We are, the Bible says that we are already sinful. When, when, when we were formed, when we were conceived in our mama's stomach, we were already in, we were conceived in sin. In other words, we were made in sin. So as a baby, yes, we're born sinners. That's why Christ had to be born of a virgin, right? Without man's seed, because man's seed is the one that has the sin nature. That's why he had to be born of a virgin. And it had to be a miraculous uh, not only conception, but yeah, conception and birth. That's why we need a savior, somebody without sin to die in our place. Jesus took the, our place on the cross. We're the ones that deserve that punishment because the penalty of sin is what? Come on, people. The penalty of sin is yes. death. You break one commandment, you've broken them all. That's what the Word of God says. How many sins does it take to take you to hell? One brothers, you're already guilty. It's kind of like playing baseball, and, and, and you're already, you already you go up to bat, and you're already out. There's already three strikes against you. Why do you even bat? You're already out. Three strikes against you, or we're born. That's why we need a savior. <coughs> now, for those in Christ, there is that. For our, for our kids, there is that age of accountability. They are covered by their mom and their dad up until their age of accountability. As Christians, as people that are living for Christ, Christ is merciful. Okay? Now, that's another teaching, but I just want you to know that God is a merciful God. And that's why he, He's waiting. Why do you think He hasn't come yet? Come back and He is merciful. He wants everybody to be saved. And saved, being born again, being saved is not a religion. It's a condition of the heart. See, because we're born with that black heart. That's why no matter how hard we try, we can never live a righteous life. That's why we're liars. That's why we're thieves. That's why we're adulterers, fornicators, drunks, homosexuals. You name it. All that is missing the mark. You know, and, 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 I, and, I, and I remind you, all those are just a warning light. You know, some some ministers bash homosexuality, which I understand why. God hates that sin. There's, there's sins and there's degrees, and God hates one sin more than the other one if you can believe that. He hates all of it, don't get me wrong. However, being a liar is just as bad. It's just, it will still send you to hell. You know, the Bible says that no liar shall inherit the kingdom of God. No liar shall inherit the kingdom of God. How many, how many lives does it take to make your life? One. How many times does it take for me to sleep with another woman other than my wife to make me an adulterer? One. How many sins does it take for me to be a sinner? One. One. How many confessions of the heart does it take to make you be born again? How many times did Jesus have to die on the cross for our sins? Whew, come on. One. One Savior. One time. It is finished. Now it's up to us to receive or reject the gift of life. It's up to us. It's, it's ready. It's here. 
Now, Jesus is doing this to us. You know? This is a gift. Brother, I'm giving this to you. Now, don't drink it because that was my boss. But I'm giving this to you. What do you have to do to make it his? Receive it. Thank you, sister. What if you never receive it? Here, take it. Don't receive it. Here, take it. Come on, buddy. Man, I love you, man. Come on, brother. Come on. You see? doesn't matter, right? It's a gift. We can't earn this. We can't buy this. And that's what religion does. They're trying to earn their way to heaven, to God. God has already done it. He's already provided it. All we have to do is receive by faith. You know what faith is? Trust. There's nothing mysterious about faith. Just trusting. That's it. Just trust. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to uh, break the break the scriptures in the, in, in, in the Greek and the Hebrew. Just receive by faith. Trust by love. See, God is faithful. If he said that you will confess your sins unto me, I will forgive you, says the Lord. He will forgive your sins. Doesn't matter what you've done. God is faithful. Deuteronomy 7 9 says, Now therefore, know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps his covenant and steadfast love. Notice that. Not wishy washy love, right? That we have all experienced. Oh, I love you, honey. Next week, he's out there with another one, right? That's not true love. That's lust. Notice. Steadfast love. You know what that means? Unmovable love. Agape love. Agape means without a condition. When it will see. So if you do what I tell you, I'll, then I'll love you. Come on, now. Don't you hate those types of relationships? If you do this, and no, 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 I'm gonna love you because I love you. <coughs> you know, I don't care if you're fat, old, and bald and ugly. I'm still gonna. I just described myself, right? <laughs> now, you know, I'm gonna love you, right? I'm gonna love you to the end, right? I'm gonna love you to the end, says the Lord. Aren't you glad he's not like this? Hey, Amen. See, you mind nothing. We would have all been forgiven. He would have divorced us a long time ago. He's a God of covenant. He has steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Right? It's up there. Now, we've talked about this before, right? We've talked how when God says a thousand generations, it's not a literal a thousand generations. I'm just reminding you. Believe it or not, this is all of you. A thousand generations, I mean, think about it. We can't even think about it. We don't know our Great, 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 great grandfather. Some of us might know our great grandfather, or not know, but know about our great grandfather. But who here knows their great, 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 great grandfather, or knows about the great, 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 great grandfather? That's only what five generations, six generations, right? God says He's going to be faithful to a thousand generations, to those that are faithful to Him. So, in other words, you are paving the way for your family. You see this? You say, "Well, my sin doesn't affect anybody. Your sin affects everybody." Your sin affects your great, 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 great grandchildren. You don't believe me? Look at your life before Christ. Well, how did I become a drunk? How did I become a womanizer? Your great grandfather was a womanizer. The spirit of womanizing, of, of, of adultery, was on him. Remember, what did I say in the beginning? Our, our, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, humans, it's against principality, demons. Demonic influences, right? Your grandfather was drunk. Your, your, your kids might be drunks. There's a homosexual in your family. Your kids or your great grandkids are going to be homosexuals without Christ. Just look at your family. And you'll see. You'll see the resemblance. It's in my family. But you know what? Not in my family. As for me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. See, and every problem, every every curse that was on the Mendoza family was broken when we came to Christ. My wife and I came to Christ. Every every curse of gambling, every curse of drunkenness, every curse of homosexuality, every curse that you can imagine was broken. 
because the blood of Christ is more powerful than anything or anyone on this planet or anywhere, brothers and sisters. So when you bear the name of Jesus, brothers and sisters, you are no longer living like those that are living without Christ. If you are living for Christ, guess what? You belong to the family of God. And if you belong to the family of God, hey, guess who's your daddy? Guess who will take care of you? Guess whose promises are upon you? See, the church, we're living like a wretched, poor person. We're living wretched. I'll be the first one to admit it. My, 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 my thought pattern is not what it used to be. My faith is not what it used to be. As you get older, you know, and, and you make all these excuses, right? Well, I used to be, you know, strong when I was younger, so, you know, I mean, I still believe in God, but God doesn't change. We change. Yeah, brother, but, man, back in the day, you know, and I, preachers used to preach, and God hasn't changed. You know who changed? We change. Because we are still serving a God that will give you a blessing, and you know what? The anointing will fall, whether the pastor is anointed or not anointed. Yeah. If you are seeking God, God will speak through that person. If he can speak to a mule, through a mule. No, I'm not calling pastor a mule, I promise. No, I'm not. But if he can speak through a mule, right, in the Bible. Balaam, remember? Balaam. If he can speak through him, come on. Now can you imagine a surrendered heart? A surrendered vessel? What mysteries he will speak to us? Now you see what... Every time we come on Sunday, pray for the pastor. That you, that God will speak through him like he has never spoken through him before. Pray for this ministry. Pray for the pastors. They are under attack more than we are. Trust me. They don't show it, but they are. The pastor is not going to tell us everything. You know that. But I'm telling you, ministry, pastors do get attacked more. Why? It's biblical. You strike the shepherd, the sheep will fall. Right? But you know what, though? God is faithful to a thousand generations. You know that God is faithful to his people. Um, look at Israel, right? They were captives for how many years? 400 years, right? They were captive. They were captive. God promised them he was going to send them free from Egypt. And what happened? They were set free. They roamed, yeah, they roamed 40 years in the desert. That was their fault. Because God would have taken them straight to the promised land, but they weren't ready. And you know what? A lot of times we're not ready. God has delivered you because he is faithful, but we are walking around the same mountain because we are not ready. God is ready. God is faithful. He will fulfill that which he has called upon your life because each and every one of you is a spoken promise. Did you know that? Somewhere, somehow, somebody prayed for you. Somebody prayed you in. You didn't think it was you who chose God, was it now, do you? I didn't choose God. I was out there drinking and partying. Thought I was having a good time. It was miserable. Put up mentiras, all lies. That's all it is out there. Bunch of lies, man. Lies by the spouse, lies by their friends. Everybody lies. Everybody just wants to use you. And you want to use everybody. Let's be, let's be truthful. God is not like that. God is faithful. Even if you're not faithful, he remains faithful. God is faithful. You know that he promised the Jewish nation because remember, there's a prophecy that said that they were going to be, they, they were spread out throughout the world. They, the, the temple was broken and they were spread out. They were taken all over Africa, throughout the nations. But he promised them that they were going to be a people once again. And you know what happened? In 1948, that's during our lifetime, during our grandfather's, grand, or, or you know, our parents' lifetime. In 1948, brothers and sisters, they became a nation again. Just like God uh, promised way, way before. So that's for a nation. I mean, know that God is faithful even to individuals. Look at Abraham and Isaac, I mean, uh, Sarah, right? 100, not, 100 years, she was 99, and she promised them a son, because they couldn't have a son. For those of you that have not read it, that's where the Hebrews begin with Abraham. Hebrew means cross over. Abraham believed. That's why they call him the father of faith. Because he believed God without seeing. 
and he crossed over from his people that were not Jewish, were not Christians, did not believe in God. They had all kinds of, as a matter of fact, did you know that Abraham and his family were, were idol makers? They made idols. They made a living out of making false gods. I, I'll sell you this, brother, for $20. God of water. You know that? Abraham was the first one in his picture, his family that believed God and crossed over. He was the first Hebrew. I believe that. God made him a promise. If you will follow me, I will make you a nation that no one, that, 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 that more, you see all the stars up there? You can't even count them? Your generations are going to be more than those stars. That's his promise to Abraham. Like, how? I don't even have a child. I mean, he's already like 100 years old. How? I don't see it. You know what? He trusted. And he went. He went into the unknown. A lot of times, God's going to call you. You know what? God is going to call you to the unknown. Not a lot of times, but he will call you. You're his child. His child. There's, there's times in your life that he's going to call you out. And you've got to walk by faith, not by sight. Because sight will, will, will make you scared. Sight will make you give up, right? Or want to make you give up. Sight will make you depressed. Sight will give you all kinds of problems if you're walking by sight. Because when you're walking by sight, guess who you're trusting? The flesh. And the flesh brings nothing but death. Okay? Now, when you trust in the Word of, of God, you're trusting in the Holy Spirit, guess what? Now it's not on you. Now you're depending on Him. You see this? We walk by faith, trust in God, trust in His Word, trust in that what He's going to say. You know what? No matter what I see, I know, you know what, Lord? I know you promised me that, this, and, and I don't see it, but you know what? I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep on serving you. You know that, and I've said the million times, but I'm going to do the, 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 the cliff note version. My wife and I couldn't have kids, right? We, we wore, I mean, the doctor told us, don't even try. But we kept on serving, and we kept on believing. And you know what? We're going to adopt, and, and we, we said, Lord, if it's your will, give us that hunger to adopt. If not, give us that peace to wait. He gave us that peace to wait, right? We kept on serving. I was already 30 years old. Like, man, you know, I want a kid, man. I don't want to be all growing in, you know, old, uh, tired, and, and, and sick, and not be able to run with these kids. So, doctor said, don't even try. But you know what? We kept on being faithful. We kept on trusting. We kept on believing. You know, did the enemy come and lie to us? Yeah. Many times. Even when my wife did get pregnant. You know, we went on a, on a trip to my job. And we asked the doctor if, if my wife could travel. The doctor said, oh yeah, if you're gonna lose that, you can lose that baby anytime, time. Any time, in your condition, you can lose it any time. Yep, that was the word the doctor told us. But we went by faith. And then there's an incident that happened when we were out there. We went to another doctor, she was a Christian. She said, no, I mean, your baby's fine. Your baby's gonna make it. Keep on trusting God. You're here for a reason. And we believe God. And of course, you all know DJ, he's 13 years old. And then, of course, my second one is you know, Jeremiah. It's a second lesson. So when man tells you no, don't believe him. If God told you yes, it's going to happen. Trust me. He said I was going to be preaching. I'm like, really, me? I don't even like talking, God. I don't like talking. I, 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 I'm, I get nervous. I'm shy. You know, I'm I, believe it or not, I am. But when I start talking about God, I can't shut up. You know, that's the Spirit of God, only God. I'm telling you, he can make he can make a, a, a mute man talk. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm perfect. I'm living proof, right? So, God is faithful. You know, God is faithful. What is he? What has he told you? What is he? Have you heard him? You know, have you heard your gifts? Have you heard what you're gonna? How he wants to use you? If not, ask him. Ask him. <laughs> you know, it's like your kids, like you know the potential in them. You know. You know, it's like, be cool. Come on. I know you. I know you. I know you can do it. Man, if you would only trust me, son, that's what Jesus is saying to you. If you would only trust me, daughter, 
If you don't want to trust me, son, I'm not asking you to do it. I'm asking you to trust me. I will make it happen in your life. Are you going to surrender your heart and trust me? I am faithful. Have I ever lied? Have I ever lied to you, says the Lord? Have I ever said something and it didn't happen, says the Lord? Have I? Then why do you doubt me, says the Lord? Why do you doubt me? If I not fulfilled, if I not said and spoken before, and it has happened already, and prof and it is being fulfilled, have I not said that? Says the Lord. Am I mad that I should lie? Am I human? Says the Lord. Am I human? Then why do you look at me as I'm human? I, did I not tell you I would walk among you, and I walked among you? Says the Lord. Did I not tell you that you, your sins will be as white as snow? And I have turned your sins into white as snow. I have forgiven you, says the Lord. So keep, stop living in the past. Go forward in me and watch what I'll do in your lives, says the Lord. You will not even recognize it. You will not even be able to stand what I'm going to do in your life. See this? But we have forgotten. We have forgotten who we serve. Or we have never learned who he is because we have never embraced his word. You know, we just come and we allow someone else to feed us. God wants to feed you from himself. God wants to feed you daily. He has daily fresh bread for you, but we go after the stale bread. The bread that was meant for someone else. God has manna for you. Don't hoard it. Don't live in yesterday's bread. He has something new for you. Trust me, says the Lord, and watch what I'll do. Do you trust me, says the Lord? Do you? I have not changed. I have not abandoned you. I have not forsaken you. I have not forgotten about you. I am the same God that you answered. I am that same God that spoke and you lived. I am that same God. Church, why do you doubt God? Why do you doubt me, sister? My strength has not diminished. I am still the same God that delivered this place. I am still the same God that, you know what, formed you out of the ground. I am still that same God that was there and gave life to Jesus. I am still that same God that's coming back. The enemy is nothing, says the Lord. He's a tool that I use, says the Lord, for my will. You are not a tool. You are my love, sister. You are my love. And I have not abandoned you or forsaken you. You are still the apple of my eyes, says the Lord. And I have not forgotten about you. I love you with a passion. Do not forsake me, says the Lord. Do not forget about me. I am the Lord your God. And I am here to deliver you. I am here to deliver you with my right, strong hand. I have not forgotten about you. I have not forsaken you. You have forsaken me. You are my bride, says the Lord. And I love you with a passion. I am not managed to lie. I am faithful, says the Lord. And I will fulfill that which I have called you to fulfill. Now stand up and march in what I have called you to do. Have I not spoken? Have I not written it, says the Lord? Now read, ingest, and watch. God is faithful, brothers. God is faithful, and he loves us with such a passion. You know that in 2 Timothy 2.13, the word of God declares, if we are faithless, notice that, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. Aren't you glad for that? He remains faithful. For he cannot deny himself. We can forgive about God. We can forget about God. We can live for our own life and, and keep on marching forward with our own life and, and make it all about us. 
but he has not forgotten about us. He will fulfill that which he had caused you to fulfill. You know? And like Brother McGee says the other day, or Sunday, you know what? He wants to use you, but if you're if you're not available, guess what? Move aside. I have I will select someone else. And I'll give it to him more than what I was going to give you. I am faithful to those that are faithful to me, says the Lord. I want you and I, and I love you, says the Lord. He wants to use you, brothers, but a lot of times we're the ones that cancel out our blessings. We're the ones that cancel out our, our assignment. Us. No one else. You know, when we're in front of him, when we, when we either get raptured or die, and we stand in front of him, there's nothing to be there, no one there to, to blame. Well, it was her. She, it was, that, was because, that was the way I had to her. It's not going to work, Adam. The woman you gave me. You know how many times I've said that? No, I'm joking. Dios, la mujer que me dice. No. Yo la escogí. It's my fault. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's joking. I'm joking, man. All right. So how many more minutes do I have? Because I don't want to. It's a school night, so. We're going to continue this. But before I leave, I didn't even get to the passage again. And I said that I want to be, you know what, that's okay, because God needs to speak to you. God needs to speak to you tonight. And who am I to, oh, I got to keep my agenda. Not this one. You'll get more out of him speaking to you than me reciting 100 verses. Right? You'll get more from him. And he wants to speak to you tonight. You know, we've neglected our gifts. Yes, we have. But it's time to start using them. It's time to, and don't let the devil lie to you. Don't let man put you down. Next month is going to get awesome, I'm telling you, because there's a thousand things going on in my mind right now, and he's telling me, and I, uh, <laughs> you know, Lord, I can only speak so much. Um, I'm telling you, it's going to get, I mean, it's, it's getting awesome. It's getting awesome. And for those of you that are hunger, hunger after him, watch out. For those of you that, that, that are, you know, I'm just be honest, not hungry for him, ask him for hunger. Ask him. Just like he said, you know, who, who lacks wisdom? Ask me, and I'll give you wisdom. You lack hunger? Ask him for hunger, brothers and sisters. Ask him to reveal his word to you. And watch how alive it's going to come. You're going to see Jesus all over this Bible. You're going to. In my words, you're gonna freak out. <laughs> Honestly, like, wow, I didn't know Jesus was all over. I didn't know it was all about my Lord. You know, I still ask Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Well, oh, yes, amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> right? Without him, I have nothing. With him, you know. Trust in the Lord, brothers. The enemy has been beating you down. To the point where you almost give up. It's like that. Ah, that's enough. I'm tired of playing church. I'm tired of lies. I'm tired of being, you know, this or that. No, you know what? That's what that's that's what enemy wants. God has so much for you. If we just learn to surrender, just like we did at the time of our appointment. If we just learn to surrender daily. Daily, every time when you wake up, Lord. Here I am. You know, I don't feel my best, but here I am. And watch, 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 watch how the hand of God will start working and everything will start coming together. You know, this year, um, you know, I'm not one to say, well, I dreamt this or I dreamt that. So I, I, you know, God speaks to all of us. Sometimes we're not us. But to me, he showed me or like a Rubik's cube, you know? It was all out of colors, all. How many of you used to cheat and peel them off and put them all together? Uh, you're, those are you the 80s. <laughs> I know I did. <laughs> hey, well, mine's done. Yeah, I took them off. Anyways, so that's not what God wants you to do. He says, I'm, I'm going to put your life back together. Right? Everything that you messed up, I'm going to put it back together. It's just a lot. Because you have humbled yourself. Watch what I'll do in your life. 
what you have messed up, I will put off. Now things are going to start coming back together. You better because he's putting it together, not me. And I believe that just like the pastor, you know, uh, our Lord showed him a page and it's a new chapter in our lives. We just like the pastor's going through it to a new page, to a new life, to a new um, chapter in his life. Guess what? We're going, we're as a church, we're going to go on a new chapter because what he's pastor is ahead, and wherever the head is, the body follows. God is leading pastor, so prepare yourselves. Not yes, we're fast, yes, you're fasting, the church is fasting, but it's not a physical fast. You need to fast spiritually. Because you can fast physically all day long, just, and it's, it's in vain. God wants your heart. God wants you to fast from that sin, from that those habits that, you know what, it might not be alcohol, but just those daily habits, our behavior, you know, our thoughts, our top pattern. Remember I told you how my top pattern have changed? That robs you from being faithful. That robs you from believing in, in, the, in the Word of God. That robs you from God fulfilling His Word in you and through you. So as you as you embark in this journey, you know what? Seek him spiritually, not just physically. I don't know if that makes sense or not. But I pray the Holy Spirit reveals that to you. That God wants your heart, not your actions. Because your actions will follow once he has your heart. A lot of times we try to do it the other way around. Right? We try to give him our hearts by our actions. And I'll be honest with you, he could care less about your actions. If he doesn't have your heart. He wants your heart first and foremost. Amen? He wants your heart, brother. Well, well brother, I'm a Christian. I, I, I'm born again since 1980. Well, yeah, but you know how many times you've taken it back? Every day we take it back. Every day. And I put myself on top of this. We take our hearts back. You know? Have you ever noticed that marriages start falling apart? Because they're selfish. Bottom line. It takes two, but it takes Christ. In the center. We're taking Christ in our center to live this life for Him. Amen. God bless you. Just remember, God is faithful. He has not forsaken you. He has not forgotten about you. He will fulfill. But we must trust and obey. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for who you are. We thank you for not abandoning us, Father God, and not forgetting about us, Father God. Forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, for forsaking you. Forgive us for putting other priorities before what you have called us to do, Lord. Before placing um, the, your will, your, your, your things, your, the things for the kingdom of God, Lord. Lord, I know you're doing a new thing in this place. Prepare our hearts, Lord. Prepare the church for what's coming. For them physically, mentally, spiritually, and financially. Prepare them, Lord. I know it's close, but we got to be prepared before we go into the battle, Lord. Prepare your people for what's coming. I pray this in Jesus' name, Lord, that you will anoint them. You will anoint them to what's coming because we cannot do this by physical strength, by our own strength. It's only by you, Lord. And I pray for the children. Prepare them, Father God. Let them know you. Let them experience you for real. That the, that, that the Holy Spirit starts speaking to the children. Because your word says that out of the mouth of babes, Father God, your revelation was going to come, Lord, Father God. And you are not a liar. You are not a lie, Father God. So I pray for the children that they will start prophesying. I pray for the children that they will start uh, receiving your Holy Spirit and that they will start, Father God, speaking mysteries just like your word says, Father God. I pray this in Jesus' name is going to happen, Father. And I pray for your church, Lord, that they will start using your gifts, Father God. But before that, that they will surrender their hearts unto you, Father God. That they will render, Father God. That they will do away with the sinful nature, Father God. Put away that old man and put on the new man, Christ, Father God. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. And I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. And we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.